Quite right, quite right, yes. Great Britain. It is time to feature Great Britain. Centurion Action 10. With the best equipment possible. Rammer. Rammer. Optics and vents of the Bond variety. Better than the, uh, better than the purple ones. What? I, my, my brain is, I've got a brain fart going on. There's the Bond equipment, and then there's the, um, no, there's the purple equipment and then the Bond equipment. This is the Bond equipment that you can't mount and demount with 10 gold. This is the, this is the best stuff. He's running the best stuff. He's also got 30, uh, regular ammo, 268 pen. He's got 30 heat, 330 pen, and he's got eight hesh. The British secret weapon that was nerfed with the HE nerf. Who are we watching? We're watching Madge 35 from the Bot Clan. Shout out to you guys. Playing the Centurion Action 10. Who's just lit a Russian light tank on fire. Which is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to see. Burn baby burn. Oh he, he stops with 23 HP left. What a way to start the game. Almost 1500 damage. Courtesy of the fire. Boop. Oh, he did not hit him. He's actually somewhat hauled down here, guys. The way he's playing. This guy knows what he's doing. We're going to feature two games in the Centurion Action 10. You guys don't get to see very many games in... Oh, that's, he's on your team. Shoot the opposing team's T100. <laughs> uh, he likes... He lit one Russian light tank on fire. He wanted to light another one. We're going to watch two epic games. You guys get to watch. You guys get to leave some comments. Let me know who is more deserving of his epic result. Who will be crowned Mr. Glorious today? This guy is uh, on a roll. He's moving up. He's looked at the minimap. He notices that most of the enemies are on the west side there in those... You know, in the, I'm going to point on the map here. Most of them are there. So it's time to move up and apply some pressure. He's applying pressure. Under pressure! Right? Here he goes. He's going to actually get some spotting assist here if he does it right. If he can approach carefully so he doesn't get hit by the... By the invisible... The, the sleeping object did not shoot him. <laughs> what a place for an object 907. Shoot the grille. There's a, a blind grille. Oh, and of course... <laughs> ah, the British gun. Super accurate. Super accurate. <laughs> Tut tut, just reload, huh? Old fella, no problem. The grillet is gonna try and. Uh, he's waiting for his camel net to engage now. <laughs> he has a building he can get behind. He has a building he can get behind. Oh, he shot your gun. And the grillet is still. Now the grillet is running away, but in the wrong direction. <laughs> and oh, you just didn't aim that shot. I know your gun has been damaged, but you did not aim that shot, buddy. Or you could have taken out the Greeley. Eh? Now there's an E100. Okay. He has a damaged gun here. No problem. He's used his first aid kit already. But he's got so much good equipment on the tank, guys. And this is... We have to take a, a minute to just explain that. You know, when you equip your tank with all the best stuff. He's running food. He's probably got brothers in arms. He's got smooth ride. He's got snapshot. He's got bound... Not bounty, bond vents, bond uh, whatever. He's he's got bond he's got bonds coming out his ass, even with the damaged gun. His gun is working about as effectively as someone who's not running the bond equipment. <laughs> you know, someone who's just playing the game without the equipment, without the expensive stuff. This is what it's like. He's just got a normal tank now. And it's just, this is a perfect illustration of how important it is to grind, uh, you know, and have the equipment to put in the time and how much of an advantage that the players that have the uh, expensive setups and the expensive loadouts. He, he just got all that damage, guys, with a damaged gun, which is how your Centurion Action X will work if you don't equip it. Now he's repaired his gun. And now he's going to be even better. 
Now he doesn't even have to aim. Beautiful illustration there, buddy. Beautiful, beautiful illustration. This is a blowout. His team is winning by 9,000 damage, courtesy in part to him doing 6,000 damage, and somehow he blocked 3,000 damage with his turret. This turret is not that strong, but he, he protected his hull perfectly, and he just, he played this thing like a boss. Like a boss, guys. We've damaged them! We've damaged them. And he's not spammed APCR like a motherfucker. You know, he's going to track this guy. Type 5 Heavy, you can track it and damage it at the same time. And he just got regular ammo loaded. Where is he going to shoot this Type 5 Heavy? In the low... No, he's, he switched to number 2. He's finally pressed number 2. He now has 330 pen. But, okay. Yeah. The poor Type 5 Heavy. He's not angled. He's blind. And he's getting farmed. By a medium tank from the front. The Type 5 Heavy has a damaged engine. You can see that. This guy has the skill that tells you what module has been damaged. I'm surprised there's this many targets. They're, they're winning by 10,000 HP. And there's still a lot of HP. Here he goes. Balls to the wall now, guys. Pedal to the metal. You just got to go in there. You're winning by 10,000 HP. You can afford to... Oh, no, he's not there. Where, where is he? He's... Okay, where, where is he? He doesn't want to get into a crossfire. He will be in a crossfire no matter where he goes. Why not shoot the IS-7 in the rear of the turret? The IS-7 is, um, is a Muppet. He's kind of facing the wrong way. His turret's facing the wrong way. He doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's, he's reverse side something. He's doing something in a reverse... He's in a reverse angle. Oh, well, look, some enemies are there. Just snap one. <laughs> this is a dream come true, guys. The Centurion Action X. Great Britain! <laughs> it's just this beautiful. Look at the DPM, though. Just crazy. And now he knows he can take a hit. Just, oh, his teammates got him. Crazy! This is crazy! Madge 35. This is a dream come true game. Maybe you should even ram one of them. He's going to ram one? Urgh! He's around them and shoot this guy now! Nuts, I tell ya! Confederate high caliber ace tanker, 9,743 damage, one kill, and he made some credits. That only took uh, six, seven minutes to farm all that damage. That was ridiculous. The challenger today is Yaya Motte from the SBS clan. Shout out to you guys who finds himself in a tier 8 game in a much better map that first game not the best map for an action 10 not a lot of places where you can get hull down but yet he made it work he bounced what well, close to 4,000 damage off his turret was just beautifully done this is a much better map much better matchmaking let's watch the second game and then you guys let me know who had the best most epic result who played his tank the best who gave you the shivers when you watched? He's moving straight to the middle to poke a ridge line with his good gun depression. This is kind of a well-known spot where he can encounter the enemy team if they decide to go up that hill. For some reason on this map, a lot of tanks like to go up to A0. <laughs> it's the high ground. There's always a big fight on this portion of the map. Let's see what happens. Look at that aim circle. It's tiny. This, gun, this certainly does have a good gun. An enemy armor is hit. The wheeled vehicle just goes by. He does not have the reload time up. Did you notice that, guys? The player in the first game would have been able to shoot that guy twice. Bond, not a bond. Yeah, bond rammer, bond vents, a directive, blah, blah, blah. This guy does not have the DPM that we saw in the first game. He does not have, oh, he has the accuracy, but his gun takes a little longer to reload. What we saw in that first game was just an incredible, incredibly equipped tank. A Unicom playing his incredibly equipped tank, you have no chance if you're 1v1ing a player like that, and uh, the Tiger wants to push him out of the way. If you're, if you're fighting, the guy in the first game, if you're fighting him one versus one in your Action X, and your Action X is not equipped, 
He's going to eat you alive. But let's watch now. The Renosorante is playing it perfectly here. He's hauled down. Is he going to move up? Is he going to move up? You have to count the dots before you move up. How many tanks are down? Look at the minimap. How many enemies are here? How many are here? If he moves up into the open there, how many can shoot him from here? You have to know how many enemies are detected before you commit. And he's decided he's going to commit. He's taken one hit from the Renosorante. He's worried about... Has he counted the dots? Are there any enemies sniping from the back? Uh, yes. A T-54 lightweight. And... Uh, it, oh, he's... I kind of made a mistake there. The, taking another one from the Renosorante. The T-54 lightweight is going to shoot you up the ass again. You're going to have to make this work. The Renosorante is still reloading because that's what a Renosorante does. It reloads forever. It's continuously reloading. All game. <laughs> he's still reloading. That Rhinocerante is sitting in his tank now and his tank is going beep, 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 Get yourself a Renasserante. It's so much fun to play. And they've won this flank. You gave up more than half your HP, my friend. But you won this flank. Which is important when you want to ensure victory. His team is losing by almost 4,000 HP. But he led the charge there. He pushed and he won the flank. Now his team, the Muppets that they are, are still pushing towards the base not realizing that they've already lost this flank and the enemies are already at their base. When you win your flank, guys, when you win your flank, pause and look at the minimap and just think, what should I do now? I won my flank. Let me look at the minimap. Oh, look, look at the minimap. Look at all the purple dots. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's a whole bunch of dots down here around our base. Maybe it's a good idea go, to go back to base. Instead of driving in the open like these guys, who are going to get farmed by these TDs, I can already see it. Unless this EBR, Super EBR, takes them all out. That is the balancing factor. But it's never a bad idea to go back to base. You can't help your team lose by going back to base. You can help your team lose by floundering in the middle of the map after you've won your flank. After you've won your flank, if you just drive out here, look at the minimap where these guys are, and flounder around in the open while the campers shoot you, then you can help your team lose. And I've seen it over and over and over and over again in thousands of replays. Just when you're in the heat of the game and you win your flank, just take two seconds, just pause, stop, take your finger off the W key, Look at the minimap and think, hmm, what should I do? Should I go back to base? Nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, the correct answer is go back to base. Sometimes, if you look at the minimap and, uh, you know, there's no enemies down here and, and you're winning by six tanks, yeah, then go for it. But nine times out of ten, especially in the epic games, the games that, you know, the great games that, that last more than two minutes, those games where you're going to get the ace tanker or you're going to end up doing seven, 8,000 damage. Those are the games. Usually, going back to base creates those opportunities. If you don't go back to base... Eh. Anyways, enough of that. You notice those guys that pushed in the north? They haven't won the game. They're almost all dead. See it over and over and over again. And he is just pumping heat pumping heat into this guy he's bounced one off his turret the guy's got two shots the t56 uh, he's got two shots he's gonna shoot you and oh he shot your track trolled that t56 backed up the wheeled vehicle just rammed you in the ass because he doesn't know how to drive and surprise guys who's doing all the who's got all the opportunity who's doing all the farming the guy that went back to base boom do you know why that is? Because it can't always be like that. No, I'll tell you why it is. It's, it's, math, it's a mathematical certainty, guys. B-52 
Because 90% of players don't go back to base. Or maybe 80% of players don't go back to base. 80% of players are Muppets. And they'll just keep pushing forward. And think about it. It's not just your team. Right? Your team, the Muppets will just keep pushing forward and die. Whoa! But it's the enemy team as well. You win your flank. You look at the minimap. Your other flank has lost. Chances are the 80% Muppets on the enemy team, they won't go back to base. They're just going to keep pushing towards your base. So if you go back to base, you will get to fight the enemy Muppets who kept going. It's a mathematical certainty. Going back to base enables you to fight the enemy Muppets. If you push forward blindly, you're going to fight the smarter enemies who know, hey, wait a minute. We lost our flank. We better defend the base. You're going to fight the better players if you keep pushing. If you go back to, fa to base, you're going to fight Muppets like this guy who kept blindly going forward. It's a mathematical certainty. And you've learned it here on Close Killerman's channel. You've learned it before, but I thought I would accentuate my description of what it's all about. And now he's going to go fight an E-75. Dare you go down there? There's a chance you could, hit, could get hit by the Grillet if you go down there, depending where that Grillet has relocated to. Or maybe the Grillet is not relocated, but now he's got a perfect shot. This is much safer. Yes, much safer. He's spamming heat like a motherfucker now, but he doesn't care because he's having the game of his life. E75 is just... I wanted to keep pushing towards the enemy base. I didn't want to go back to base. Now here he goes. Still three enemies. The Grillet has two kills. The SU-101 has... He has been detected. Okay, he has moved. I was just going to say he's possibly AFK, but he's not. The artillery has not been detected yet. The game is still not an ensured victory. They're still losing by about 500 HP. Now, what the Centurion Action X... Action 10 has is very good view range. Not very good concealment, but if he pokes these ridge lines, oh, there you go. And he got detected. Boom! Snap a Rooney with Hesh that penetrated. 105 pen, 480 damage on the Hesh round. It hit and it penned and it killed. He's got Top Gun. He, he's a, he's a one-shot to the Grillet. So he has to be a little careful here. Let's clap for both these players, guys. They both had fantastic games. Let me know in the comments who, who had the most epic run. Which game do you think was more fantastic? They were both amazing. It ain't over. And let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know what tank you would like to have featured next time. I like doing these two videos per or two games per video where you get to contrast two styles two players playing similar tanks if not the same tank sometimes very differently it's fun to watch this a full hp grille this is not this is not a victory yet guys this is a full hp grille now that projecto 54 has some uh, hp but He's pulled the switcheroo on the Grillet, I think. The Grillet is a he's he's a blind he's a blind deaf and dumb Grillet. <laughs> the Grillet is just hey guys, and he's penned them with Hesh. It's not going to take a lot of shots with Hesh. The Grillet just decided to go drive in a big circle because you know, why not? Oh, he got shot by the SU. Okay, the Grillet shot. Commit towards the Grillet. Commit towards. Armor not hit. Trolled. Ah, that's the problem with HE. It has been nerfed. And boom. One more. One more. He's on 3 HP, guys. 3 HP. There's an SU coming behind them. Let the Progento have it. The Grillet forgot to shoot his gun. Enemy vehicle destroyed. The Grillet forgot to shoot. Daddy, I'm going to go for a drive and I forgot to shoot. Got him. Got him.
Aided by the presence of an absolutely hopeless grille, he gets Radley Walters, steel wall, high caliber, and top gun, ends up with 10,327 damage, aided by the fact that a lot of his team did nothing, and he spent 114,000 on ammunition, but made credits because Russian math, Russian math works again, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Catch you guys on the next one.